Okay, so this video will be about formulas in Google Sheets. So if you're trying to use Google Sheets as a calculator, you can go to any cell in Google Sheets and start with an equal sign. And the moment you start with an equal sign, it knows that what you're trying to do right now is some kind of calculation. So I'm going to start with something basic. I'm going to do 10 plus 20. And you can see already how it gives me what the total is, 30. So if I hit enter, it will just apply it in the cell. Now the cell says 30. So if I click on that cell, if I look here on top in the formula bar, you can still see we have the formula. So you can either click in the formula bar or you can double click in the cell and it will let you change what your formula was. So I can keep adding or subtracting values. And then as soon as you hit enter, it will give you your total. Going back to this, so that's how we add and subtract. So if you wanted to multiply two numbers, you do two and then this asterisk, the star, is multiplication. So two times five, that's 10. I hit enter, that's what I get. We can also divide. Two divided by four, that would be 0 0.5 and that's slash, that's for division. We have this, so that's two to the power of three, which means two times two times two, that's eight. And that's the caret. And finally, you have this, which is ampersand, which is text operation. So as of right now, if I do two ampersand three, I'm saying let's add two and three together as text. So if you put two next to three, it's just gonna be two, three. Now let's look at some other things. So I'm gonna do 10 plus 20 and then multiplied by four. So you can see how it says that this is gonna be 90. When you create a formula in Google Sheets, it's not going to apply your formula left to right. What it's going to do is going to go by the order of operations. So that means that instead of doing 10 plus 20, which will give you 30, and then multiplying that 30 by four, which would give you 120, instead it's going to do 20 times four first, and it's gonna get an 80, and then it's gonna add 10, and it's gonna get us 90. So if our intention was to do 10 plus 20 first, then we can do parentheses to force that operation to be first. And now it's gonna be 10 plus 20, 30 times 4, 120. So the order of operations is parentheses, then exponents, then you do multiplication and division, and then finally you do addition and subtraction. So we start with parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction. And for that reason, if our formula was this, now there are no parentheses, no exponents, then we have multiplication and division, so we're gonna multiply 20 times four, 80, and then add 90. Now if I add parentheses, then we have this, right? Then it's gonna do this first, because parentheses first, and then multiply after that. Couple of more things just to make sure we didn't skip anything. Let's say our formula says something like this. So now I have division and multiplication mixed. There is no priority between division and multiplication. So we don't multiply first and then divide. They are on the same level. So therefore we're gonna first divide because division is first in our formula and then multiply by two. So six divided by three is two and then multiply by two is four. Similarly, if we have the opposite, if we have multiplication first and division second, we're going to first multiply and then divide. So if our formula is something like this, This is how it's going to work. First, it's going to do exponents. So it's gonna get eight out of this. Then after we got eight out of this, we're gonna do eight times four. So we're gonna get 32. Then we're gonna do six times five. And that's gonna give us 30. 
and then we're going to do 4 divided by 2, it's going to get us 2. And then after we did this operations, we're going to go to the beginning and go add and subtract. So 4 plus 32, that will be 36. And then 36 minus 30, that's 6. And then 6 minus 2 is 4. So this should be 4 as a result. And as you can see, it is. So when you create a formula in spreadsheets, you have to be aware of this order of operations. Because if you're not, you will probably get some results that are not exactly accurate. So that was using Google Sheets as a calculator. Now let's try to use Google Sheets as a spreadsheet application. So what I have on the right is a table with some products and quantities and prices. We want to calculate the total for all of these. Now the first thing I need to do, I have to do 12 times 400 to calculate how much is the total for all these cell phones. So if I go here, I'm going to start with equal sign and then do 12 multiplied by 400. And that gives me the total, right? 4,800. If I would enter, that would be accurate. Now, what's the problem with this? The first problem with this is if I decide that cell phones are actually less expensive and this is supposed to be 380, well, this is not going to update. I'm going to have to go back and manually update this number, which kind of defeats the purpose of using a spreadsheet. So in spreadsheet applications, instead of hard coding our numbers in our formula, we use a cell reference. And what we mean by cell reference is this cell on the left includes the number that I'm looking for, 12. It contains 12 in it. And that cell is E3, column E, row 3. So instead of typing 12, I'm going to erase 12 and type E3. That will point to the cell. So now if I hit enter, that will give me the total, but now it's connected to the cell. So if I decide instead of 12 cell phones, it's going to be 11, I hit enter, this will update automatically. Now we have to also apply the same logic to this, 380. So instead of typing 380 in our formula, we're going to do F3, which is the location of that number. So hit enter and that will give us this total. And now we can go back and change these numbers and our total should automatically update. The other advantage of doing this, which means using cell references, is that now I can use autofill in Excel to populate the same formula for laptops and tablets without having to go and write the same formula all over again. So all I do is click on this first formula, go to that corner when this little box is, and when I see this little black cross, I click and drag it down. And as soon as I let it go, we have our totals. So now this is multiplying 7 by 670, and this is multiplying 8 by 350. Now let's say I want to add another product to this list. Now the easiest way to do this when you're adding a product is to add it in the middle of your list. Instead of adding in the end, the problem with adding in the end is this, right? If I create a new product, let's call this uh, TV, then we're gonna go here and type how many and how much it is per piece, right? And then we need to do the calculation. Now the problem with this is that it didn't take any of this formatting. Now I have to go and copy all the formatting over from the top cells, which I could do. I could go here, select all of these, right? I would probably also include this one, go under this paint format and click on this, and that should copy the formatting over. But instead of doing all of that, I'm going to undo this a couple of steps by pressing Control Z, you could just simply add your new item in the middle of this range. So if I go right here and right click on this five and insert one above the tablet, see it will automatically copy all the formatting so I don't have to worry about it. So I can go here and type TV and then let's say we're getting this many of that and this is this much per piece. Now to be able to do the total, we're still going to take this and click on this formula on top and drag it down. And that's our total for TVs. 
Now let's say I want to get the total for everything. I want to see how much is all of these. Now one way to do this is by clicking in this explore icon on top right. And then you could simply just navigate here a little bit. You could highlight these numbers, take the sum and drag and drop it to wherever you want the total. That's one method of doing this. I'm going to close that. Another way to do the same thing is by using auto sum. And for that, I'm going to zoom out a little bit by doing control minus. See, there's this button that looks like some icon. And I could just go here and click in the cell, go on top and click on this sum icon. And then it's going to ask me, which one do you want to do? Now I'm going to go and click on the sum. And then it's going to ask me for the value. So the values are going to be these numbers. Now I could just simply select all of those and that will also sum it up. So if I hit enter, that will give me the total. We can also manually create this formula without using auto sum or using explore. So the way you do that, you start with an equal sign and then well, one way to do it is the old fashioned way. So you could just say, let's take G3 plus G4 plus G5 plus G6. And hit enter. Now that's one way to do this. This is fine in a way if you only have four numbers. But I'm going to show you the problems with doing it this way or possibly sometimes advantages and not problems. So you'll see in a second what I'm talking about. Let's first call this old way. Not really the old way, but that's what I'm going to call this. This we did explore, which is this button. And this one we did auto sum, which was this icon on top. I'm going to manually write the function. To create a formula, again, you always have to start with your equal sign. So equal sign. Now, instead of doing regular self references, when I said G3 plus G4 plus G5, etc., I'm going to use a range in Google Sheets. And range is when you say this is the starting cell and this is the ending cell and just grab every cell in the middle. And that makes it a range. Now, when you use a range, you will probably want to say what you want to do to that range. Now, what I want to do, I want to sum those numbers up. So I'm going to type sum. Now you can see how Google Sheets gives me different suggestions. It basically shows us all different functions that Google Sheets has available that start with the word sum. Now I'm just looking for regular sum function. I'm going to open parentheses and close parentheses. All Google Sheets functions have the syntax. You have the name of the function, then open and close parentheses. Now, inside of those parentheses, you're going to give arguments to this function. You can see how it gives you an example here. Right below, it says do A2 colon A100. So this is what we call a range. Now, to give it a range, we have to give it a starting cell. So the starting cell here, this 5600, is located in G three cells. So I'm going to type G three and then I'm going to use colon and that will make this a range. And then the last cell is G six. So I'm going to type G six. And by doing this, this colon says from two. So we're getting everything from G three through G six. And because we're using that inside of a sum function, we will be adding those numbers together. So we're going to hit enter and we're going to get the same thing. So if I look at this one, see it says sum G3 colon G6. That's the one I just did. Now, if I look at this first explore option, you can see it's actually the same thing. When you use explore, it's doing the same thing, only it does it automatically so you don't have to. And then finally, auto sum, again, the same exact formula, sum G3 colon G6. And then finally, the old way was to add these numbers like this. Now let's see what's the difference between doing this the old way or doing this with one of these ways, which is really the same, other than it's just easier with a function
to have a range of numbers if you have a lot of them. So if we had 200 different products, then adding one after the other, that would be a crazy long formula if I was trying to do this like that. But the second difference is this. Let's say we want to add another product to this range. So I go here and I go in the middle and add another row. So let's say this product is gonna be external drive. We have some quantities, some price, and then we're going to take this and drag this down. Now look what happened. Explore autosum and this function method, which are all the same, are now including that new external drive total in our main total. However, the old way that I did with pluses, see it does G3, G4, but it's not gonna do G5. So we would have to go and manually update this formula. Now, because here we use a range, it will automatically expand the range and include that number in it. So that's another difference between using a function method to total this and the regular adding with plus signs. This should be enough for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use different type of self references instead of this regular E3 and F3 references and why those type of references are necessary. But for this one, this should do it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.